What's up, boot campers? Today I want to go over the ADA AdSAS application, and we're going to fill it out together, and I'll sort of give you some tips and tricks that you can use when you're filling out the application. That way there's sort of uh, no mist behind the scenes. All right, let's get started. So this is the AdSAS application portal, and we are at the login screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. And we're going to be on the welcome page, essentially, and they're going to give you some uh, details about how the portal works. And so you can uh, skip through this and read it yourself. And they do have a mobile app if you want to download that. Uh, that's your choice. So let's begin the application. So it's gonna, here it's going to say, hello, whatever your name is. Thank you for your interest. And when do you plan to start the program? I guess for most of you, it'll probably be like summer or fall 2019. Uh, it's not a big deal. Just go ahead and enter that. And from here, you're going to have to pick at least one school in order to continue on with the application. And so let's just pick a couple of schools. We can pick Columbia. Uh, we like California. Let's pick USC. Let's go ahead and pick Nova. And let's see if I can pick any, any other schools here. UCSF, UCLA. Now we get the picture. I like Penn. And you can always unselect any school. So, for example, if you selected uh, Tennessee, you could always go right here, undo and then uh, say yes, delete program, and then it's unselected, and you can always go back and select it again if you wish. So uh, there's that. Anyways, you can always add schools on in, uh, further on in the future. Here it tells you the amount of programs you've selected and how much the, just the initial fees are going to be. And so we could say I am done. And here it's going to give you the progress of each individual program that you're applying to. As you can see, none of them are obviously completed at this point. And remember, you can always go back and uh, change this. So now this is sort of the login page that you're going to see every time you're going to be logging in. So essentially here you have my application, which is composed of four different uh, sections, personal information, academic history, supporting information, program materials, and uh, it sort of tracks your progress as you fill information along. This is the add program tab where you can obviously add programs. So if we want to add, say, uh, Case Western, we go ahead and add that. And then that's it. We can go back. Submit application. So whenever you're ready to submit your application for certain schools, you can do it one at a time. You don't necessarily submit all of them at once. So if let's say you completed everything for the University of California, San Francisco, uh, you would be able to uh, submit this application. And then you could still be working on, say, uh, Nova or uh, Pennsylvania, uh, something along those lines. This is the check status tab right here on the right. And essentially this lets you know where your application stands in regards to each single uh, dental school that you, you're applied to. So for example, uh, we could see a Nova, it's in progress and everything else is gonna be in progress, obviously. However, if let's say your application is complete, uh, schools may change the application status to complete or under review. If you've been given an interview invite, it will say uh, interview invite. Uh, if you've been offered an acceptance, it'll say offer of admission or something along those lines. And so you can sort of track your progress here. However, keep in mind that some schools do not necessarily update their status on the AdSAS application portal. So it might say none the whole entire time or application complete. And so sometimes you may have to call the school directly and ask them where your application stands. Anyways, let's go back to the main page right here. I still want to go over a few things. So here at the bottom, if you scroll down, you have the ADA's number. And so if you have any, applica any application questions, you could always go and call them and ask them about those. They also have an email right here at the bottom that uh, you can email them. They have some FAQs and instructions. Here on the top right, this is your AdSAS ID. It's uh, Here they, they call it the CAS ID. And this is essentially it right there. And uh, if you ever get a notification, so for example, if your transcripts got uh, verified, if uh, a letter of recommendation arrived, if your DET got verified, you will receive the notification right here. And additionally, uh, the, the bell icon will also be lit up. Uh, so there's that. Um, let's continue forward. Let's go through each one of these sections so we sort of know uh, how everything looks like and what we're putting down on each uh, part of the application. So let's go to personal information and we're going to start with the first uh, tab, release statement. And so you're going to essentially read through this and it essentially tells you that the ADA will be sharing your information with other dental schools and you're going to want to read through everything here. And you allow them to release that information and uh, you'll save and continue and you will continue on to the next section. And when you've completed a section, you'll get the little check mark right here. And as you can see, the circle sort of gets more complete as you go along. 
if you have any alternate names, so this is biological information. Um, I know for me, whenever I immigrated from Ukraine to Canada, I had, my first name is spelled two different ways. And so uh, I would say yes, and then I'll uh, obviously enter the alternate first name and I'll save it. Um, so there's that. Uh, everything else should be pretty self-explanatory, gender, birth information, and you just uh, save and continue. Let's just enter some random information here and uh, we'll see how that looks like. Let's pick uh, Canada, actually. There we go. Save and continue. And once again, you see the check mark, everything got full. And we'll move on to the contact information. So everything here is also pretty self-explanatory. However, one thing I do recommend is that you create a brand new email. I'll just say make a new Gmail account. Uh, this way, all of your dental school application, dental related stuff is going to be on one email. Um, you won't miss anything. Uh, it just a lot makes things a lot simpler. So you can go ahead and create a new Gmail account uh, to do that. Citizen information. Let's see if uh, citizenship information. So everything here should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let's go to environmental factors. So one thing I would suggest here is... Uh, this says it's for U.S. applicants only. Keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to fill out every single portion of the application. As here, if you have a little red star, that means it's a required field. However, if it doesn't, you don't have to fill it out. So, for example, this information here, you don't necessarily have to fill it out. I would also leave the income blank. Um, they don't really need to know that. Uh, let's see. If you want to be a disadvantaged consideration, so they say that, do you wish to be considered this, a disadvantaged applicant by any of your designated programs that may consider such factors, uh, social, economical, educational? If yes, uh, please answer the following question. So you'd click yes. And here you sort of have 4,500 characters, which is a pretty substantial amount. To sort of describe any disadvantage that you had uh, while growing up or something along those lines. And the, here are some additional questions that... Uh, fairly st straightforward uh, so it's, here it says description of childhood residency essentially you may want to mention uh, for example um, the majority of my my childhood I actually grew up in Toronto and so uh, I could uh, talk about how it was a very multicultural city and I got to experience a lot of different cultures and so it's a pretty short paragraph to only 250 characters uh, remember spaces are included in these and everything else should be pretty straightforward if you have any relatives in dentistry you want to let them know, especially if they went to private schools, because you could have a legacy uh, legacy uh, status in that school, or if you're, you're going to be basically a legacy applicant, and that sort of helps your application. And so you want to let them know what school they went to and uh, stuff like that. And everything else is pretty straightforward. So we would save and continue, and we would go, go on to the next tab, the parent guardian information. You don't have to add any parent guardian information. This is not a required field, so you could just do that. If you do want to add it, that's uh, your choice. Um, so essentially, you just everything here is also pretty straightforward. And uh, for the sake of uh, this presentation, I'm just going to say no. Race and ethnicity. So you consider yourself to be of Hispanic, Latino origin. So whatever that fits for you, uh, that's how you would answer that. And also what race sort of uh, is best considered you. Um, so you'd go ahead and uh, answer that as well. Save and continue. There we go. Let's go on to the next section. This is where you enter other information. So this is where you'd enter your dent pin number. So let's say that we are going to do this. Oh, let's see. Just put a random, uh, put your dent pin number here. You should have got an email earlier on when you were uh, registering for the DT. So that's where you would find your dent pin information. What is your native language? So if it's English, if you do speak another language, uh, go ahead and add another language. For example, uh, I speak Russian. So I'll be able to go ahead, scroll down. Add Russian, I am advanced, and so I could add that. Keep in mind that if you do say something along those lines, this is fair game on an interview. One of my interviews, um, they introduced themselves to me in Russian, and so that was pretty cool, and so just keep that in mind. Uh, military status, everything else here is pretty self-explanatory. If you have any sort of uh, background issues, uh, you do have to mention them on the application, obviously. Uh, schools will do a background check, and so if... Uh, you say that there's nothing on your record and there's something shows up, obviously that's going to cause some, some problems. Um, if you had any educational uh, interruptions, so for example, if you had to uh, take a pause in schooling because you had to work or anything along those lines, you do have a thousand characters to sort of talk about your situation if you want to do that. If you've applied to dental schools in the past, you also have to let the, let the schools know. And so you would say yes in the year that you uh, applied and also which dental schools you applied to. 
you would let them know. And also you, you want to let them know what, what changed in your application. This is why I always tell applicants, uh, just because you submitted your application, say on June 5th or whenever, uh, doesn't mean that you should stop doing all of your extracurricular activities, being a part of clubs, continuing to volunteer. Uh, you you want to continue being a part of these experiences and continue to grow as a person because sometimes they might ask you in the interview, so tell us something that's not on your application or tell us something that changed uh, from when you submitted. And so if you can add new experiences and tell them new, um, what you learned uh, since the time, uh, this is obviously going to be very favorable and it's going to work in your favor. So keep that in mind. Also, the, the manual dexterity component here. So if you so they give you a couple of examples here. For example, they say describe any activities requiring manual dexterity. Uh, activities requiring hand-eye coordination, such as uh, cross-stitching, sewing, arts, crafts, playing musical instruments, auto repair, at which you are proficient. So essentially, this means that um, you didn't just take one afternoon and then you learned how to uh, how to paint or anything like that. This has to be a pretty substantial experience. And so, for example, for me, um, I was working in the wood shop. I took a lot of wood shop classes since the seventh grade, and so I was able to talk about that. I was also in auto repair, and so I mentioned that as well. So there's that. And let's see, so then now we would save and continue. And as you can see, we filled out pretty much all the sections here in the uh, personal information tab. And let's go on to academic history. And so this is essentially where you would uh, add your high school. It's pretty straightforward. Um, let me just say, there we go. You would enter that in. Go here, we are international. If you graduated from this high school, uh, whatever the graduation date was, and you would save the school. Move on to the next section, add a college. So here you would enter the, your university's name. And there we go. Save that. Um, the type of degree. So most of you are probably going to be in the Bachelor of Science. So let's see, Bachelor of Science, when are you going to earn it? I guess for most of you it would be... Uh, Probably, I guess, May. Let's see, May in 2019. And what is your major? So, my major was actually kinesiology. So, we would scroll, whoops, went way too far down. There we go. Um, I don't have a minor, so I can say none or no answer. There we go. You can add another degree if you do have another degree. Uh, what was the term system your college used? Uh, you would select that. And so, Everything else is uh, pretty self-explanatory, your first semester and your last semester, uh, things like that. And then let's move on to the transcript entry. So this is where uh, students may have a little bit of trouble. So let's add the college first. University. Oh, oh so I guess for transcript entry, they, they do make you enter the uh, university first. Let's do that. So I guess I have to, you have to fill this out before you complete. So once again, let's say uh, Bachelor of Science. There we go. Semester, and we'll say the first fall. school year is and let's say we're still attending there we go so now that we save this and this is actually where you download your transcript request form and so you would click on this form and this is the form that you would attach when you are sending your transcript to AdSAS uh, they would need this because it has your ID and it has the uh, instructions for for your school on where to send this application so let's now go to transcript entry um, the ADA does offer a service where they actually enter all your transcript grades in um, so that's up to you if you want to go with it. Uh, it's uh, $65 for up to three transcripts, $90 for four to six, and $140 for seven or more. Um, so it's up to you if you want to use it. I personally said no. I didn't have really have any trouble filling out my transcript. So you'll get to this screen. So now let's start with the transcript entry. So first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add a semester. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's say we're a fall, I don't know, 2014 and uh, freshman and it's been completed so we would save that so now we have that semester on and you would have to add every single semester um, that you've taken through your college and semesters that you are going to take remember there's a section here so to add courses that are planned and i'll show you how to do that in a second so let's add a few courses um, so essentially when you're entering the transcript you have to enter every single course that appears in your transcript 
So you'd actually have to go to your school and get a transcript report. And that way, when you're entering it, you're sort of entering the right course codes and everything. Um, just because you drop the course and uh, if it shows in your transcript, you have to enter it. So once again, exactly how your transcript looks is exactly how you should enter it here. And so let's just take a sneak peek of some of my courses that I took. So I would say um, here, so this is the course code. I would enter that right here, course code, uh, the course title. So this course title is Historical and Cultural Perspectives. Uh, right here, the subject, this was a humanities course that I had taken. Oops, let's go right here. Humanities. And when you're selecting subjects, sometimes you may not be able to find sort of the exact subject of what, where you think it fits. And sometimes it's okay to just sort of uh, take an estimated guess. That ADA will go back and they'll uh, fix everything um, if there's any mistakes, anything along those lines. So don't panic too hard. Um, maybe you want to go with something more, uh, more broad. Uh, so, for example, if it's something biology related, just go with biology and that will be perfectly acceptable. The amount of credits. Uh, so this one was a three credit course. And there's that. And uh, this is actually partial credits. So if like your, your course was like three and a half credits, you, know, you can go three like this. Um, I just put zero, zero because mine is just a three credit course. And the grade you received. So let's say you received that mark. Whoops. And so that's it. And then you can click save. And there you entered one course. Now let's say that your course is a pass fail course. So let's go ahead and add that. Uh, one of my pass fail course was a peak in, which is just essentially um, a gym course that you could take. <clears throat> there we go. And this is the course code for it. And it was actually a hockey peak in. You would do that. And um, so this is like a gym course that you're just exercising. There's no really academics behind it. Um, so I'll do my best guess and say since it was movement and my major is uh, uh, kinesiology. Let's see, where is that? Oops. I'll just put kinesiology and the uh, ADA can uh, go ahead and fix that to wherever they think it's uh, is best. Uh, so put zero since it's a no credit course, zero, zero. And if it's a pass fail, you can just put pa pass and then or you can put fail. There you go. And uh, they automatically will fix that later. Don't worry too much about it. So. There we go. And then you would click save and there we added it. Um, let's say we're adding a semester that we haven't done yet. So let's go ahead and say, and say like 2020. And then let's say that's going to be our senior year, uh, whatever. And it's going to be in progress and planned. So there we go. We would save that. And then we would go ahead and add a course. And let's say we're doing like the biology course. That's what you would do. You'd say bio 101, whatever the course code is. Uh, introduction to biology and you want to make this description um, accurate obviously to whatever you plan on taking and this is a biology course so we'll say biology and however many credits will be three credits there we go and uh, that's it you won't be able to enter a grade a grade in here because it is in progress or planned and then you would save and then that's it and so that's how you essentially add courses um, if we scroll down, we actually see prerequisite information for every single program that we are applying to. Uh, keep in mind, though, sometimes uh, schools, they may say that uh, these are just uh, recommended courses. They're not essentially uh, required courses. And so you essentially want to go back and reference every single program to ensure that you are uh, just completing the requirements. Uh, if they're just recommended, remember, you don't really have to have it. They're just something that they recommend. And so just go back because sometimes in these sections, they actually show the required and recommended. So you might say like, oh, they require a psychology course, but they might uh, only say that that's a recommended. So, and so you want to go back and reference that information. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it on this end. Let's go back now. I mean, let's go forward now to the standardized tests. And so if you're taking the DAT, so there's the US DAT and the Canadian DAT. If you're not uh, taking a DAT, you would say, I'm not taking a standardized test. And that is saved. And if you would like to add a test, there we go. Uh, some Canadian schools actually don't require a DAT test. Uh, so I guess that's why they added that right there. Anyways, so let's say we took the US DAT. So if you have already taken the test, you would click yes. If you haven't, then it will be a plan date. And you can always edit it. So let's say uh, we are planning to take the DAT in uh, July 1st, for example. And then so here we would enter our dent pin number, whatever that was. I think this was right. So save that. And uh, yeah, so now it's, uh, it's planned to be taken on August 1st. 
and uh, let's go back and edit it because we made a mistake. Maybe we're not taking it on August 1st, we're taking it on July 1st. And so that's what we would do. We'd go here, save it. And so you could always go back and uh, change things uh, through this edit button. If you've already taken it, then you would uh, save the date that you took it at. So let's say we took it back in April this year. Uh, since you guys are all part of bootcamp, you all scored really high. There we go. And so that's it. You would just enter it exactly as you see it. You would save it. And then uh, once again, this uh, test will get verified by the ADA um, in the future. And this takes about, um, I guess, two to four weeks to get verified is an accurate statement. And so that's it. That's how you would enter the standardized tests. And that's how we went through uh, the academic history section. Now let's move on to the supporting information. So firstly, we have evaluations. Let's go ahead and click that. Uh, evaluations are essentially letters of reference, letters of recommendation. Um, they're all, they all mean the same thing. Remember that you can upload up to a maximum of four individual letters, or you can have one individual letter and one committee letter. Excuse me, let me just have a quick drink of water. There we go. So let's say we're gonna, we emailed our professor, we met with them in person, and we're asking for that strong reference letter and they agreed. So then we'll go back home and say, create evaluation request. Um, if it's not a committee letter, you obviously click no. So this is where you'd enter their first and last name, their email address, um, a due date for them, and a personal message. Uh, thank you for writing this letter for me. Um, this is the ATSAS uh, application where you'd have to fill it out, blah, 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 blah. Um, you always have to waive your right to view the letter. Uh, you want to give them permission to contact uh, the reference and permissions for schools to contact the reference. And so then that's it, you'd save this evaluation request and it would uh, show up there. Now let's move on to the experiences section. So this is where you're adding experiences. Uh, let's go ahead and click add an experience. So whatever type it is, uh, academic enrichment, dental experience, employment, extracurricular activities, research, volunteering. Uh, so essentially you'd pick one of the categories. So we could say, uh, let's say volunteering for this example. So whatever it is, maybe you volunteered at the dental office. So you would say Dr. S's dental office uh, dental office, um, the country, whatever that was. For me, I guess it would make sense to put it in Canada, in Ontario. You would enter your supervisor's name, whatever they, whatever it was, their last name, the title, contact information. Uh, keep in mind, you don't actually don't have to answer uh, answer this if you don't want to. I just recommend doing it. It just makes things seem more uh, more legit in a sense. Experience dates. So when you started this experience. So let's say this was, um, let's say we started in let's, uh, January 1st for simplicity's sakes. Um, and let's say this was one of the offices that we uh, volunteered at and we went all the way from January to April 1st. And uh, we were there part time. Uh, per diem means essentially it was a project basis. So this would be more for employment. Um, there we go. So part time. The title, so I could say uh, dental office volunteering. There we go. Type of recognition. So this is volunteer. Uh, here you enter your average weekly hours, number of weeks, and the total hours. Essentially, I would say uh, first get your total hours. So let's say it was, uh, I don't know, 100 hours and uh, the amount of weeks that we did and the weekly hours. So you can see how many weeks it was. Let's make this actually even simpler. Let's make this... Uh, not April, let's make this uh, February 1st. So it was four weeks. And so we would say uh, our total numbers, let's say our total hours are 100, and we worked for uh, four weeks. So it would be 25 hours per week, essentially. There we go. And so I uh, don't really worry about exactly what's the average weekly hours, because I know sometimes you might say, well, Alex, I didn't volunteer for two weeks because I was busy doing finals and uh, the other week I sort of did this many hours and another week I did a little bit less and the other week I did a little bit more. Uh, as long as your total hours is correct and you can sort of explain everything or how you did this calculation in an interview, uh, you won't run into any problems. And here, this is where you write the description and your key responsibilities. So remember, you're gonna write a description of the experience, then you're gonna talk about your roles and responsibilities. And then you sort of gonna talk about what skills uh, you learned um, improved upon or uh, right or anything else that you gained out of this experience you're going to talk about it you do have 600 characters uh, with spaces that is again 
and you want to release them to contact the organization uh, once again and then you'll just save and continue and there you have it and then you have your experiences here uh, as i mentioned before in our previous uh, videos uh, you're looking for probably around 10 experiences 8 to 10 quality experiences that you were actively engaged in uh, to have on your application and you're able to star your experiences and this means that this was one of your top six most important experiences uh, you don't have to do this at all uh, you can maybe have uh, three experiences all it does is it's sort of um, on your application the experiences that you highlight uh, or the ones that you highlight they will go to the top of the list and so when someone's reading your application they'll see those experiences otherwise they're just going to go in order um, it's not a big deal so there's that uh, when you do submit your application to uh, at least one dental school uh, you won't be able to edit anything uh, but you will be able to uh, add additional experiences as the time progresses so if let's say you submitted your application on june 5th and then um, you gained another experience you went for like a mission trip or you did some research or anything along those lines uh, you could always go back and add more experiences and then i would always follow up with the school and send them a letter uh, letting them know that i uh, hey i was uh, i did this experience blah 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 so there's that now let's move on to the achievements so this is where you will be adding any achievements and so you have awards honors or scholarships uh, so you have like the name. So for example, I had an entrance scholarship. So I'd say York University uh, entrance scholarship. Um, there you go, York University. Whenever it was issued for you and a brief description of the scholarship. So I'd say it was merit-based or something along those lines. Or write or however your scholarship is tailored. Uh, any licenses that you had. So if you were a dental uh, hygienist or a dental assistant and you had some sort of license, uh, you can go ahead and add that license right here. And the personal statement pretty self-explanatory essentially you'll be copy pasting from the word document or wherever you wrote your personal statement and you'll be pasting it into here uh, remember it's 4500 characters with spaces included uh, so there's that and so that completes the uh the supporting information section and now let's move on to uh, program materials so in program materials this essentially shows you all the dental schools that you are applying to and so let's uh, for example select here nova and so we selected that and as you can see on the left over here we have all the additional dental schools that we are applying to at the moment um, you have a description of the dental school here it gives you some information about the letters of recommendation uh, sometimes it gives you uh, their contact uh, information uh, maybe it gives you some deadlines right here so their application is due by december 1st but since you guys are in boot camp you are going to be submitting it a lot sooner than that you definitely don't want to be submitting it this late um, regardless of what your scores are your chances are very slim if you're submitting it on december 1st Anyways, uh, let's move on here to the, to the prerequisites tab. Um, so essentially here, uh, let's see, we're adding coursework. So essentially before you uh, check those off, we gotta go back and uh, review and finalize my transcript. So let's, get, let's do that, let's select that. If you repeated any classes, any advanced placement, um, anything along those lines. So just click no for all of them for now, and that's it, so we did that. Let's go back to program materials. Remember, we were at Nova prerequisites. And so once you've verified your transcript, you'll actually go into uh, this sort of tab. And so you could assign courses here to ensure that you're fulfilling all the prerequisites. So you'd go to, say, organic chemistry assigned course. And you would uh, pick it out because uh, essentially you would have all of your courses listed here on your transcript. And so uh, you would go about it that way. Uh, let's go back actually and pick... Uh, Let's see biology so for example biology and you if you need more than one course so here it says uh, you'll need uh, two courses uh, so this is biology 101 and maybe you would have biology uh, 102 or whatever so you would select that and save and exit and so as you can see we sort of fulfilled that requirement ourselves right here uh, keep in mind that you can enter any courses here uh, this is just more for you to sort of track your own uh, progress that ensure that you're meeting the requirements of every school because i could say that it was this peak in random gym course and save it and it'll sort of fulfill our English requirement uh, as the ADA doesn't really reference that. Uh, so keep that in mind. Let's go back here. There we go. And so you do that just to ensure that you're meeting all the requirements for every single program. And let's move on to the questions here. So sometimes these questions are actually supplemental applications. And I suspect that as uh, we move forward with the online AdSAS application portal, uh, schools will essentially all be put it, all of them will be putting on their supplemental application right here on this portal instead of having it on an external uh, website or on their own website. Um, sometimes it, it might be supplemental applications, other times it just be, might be additional questions uh, 
that they want to ask you to get to know you a little bit more. So here it says, how did you hear about NSU College of Dental Medicine? So uh, it's only 450 characters. So you want to mention that. Uh, I just don't recommend saying uh, like one, uh, one, line, uh, one word answers, something along those lines. So maybe you want to mention that, oh, I heard about it from a friend and then I did a little bit of research about the school and I really liked the whatever, I, blah, blah, blah. And so was the information about our program easily accessible? I would have just put yes, right? Um, you Give them a sentence, you know. Uh, that just shows uh, that you're actually interested in the program because they might read it and say, oh, he just put yes uh, or, or she just put yes. They're probably not that interested in the program. So remember, it's all about managing perceptions. And so you would save your responses uh, like that and then that's it. And so you get the green check mark that you're done that. Uh, so there's that. Let's move on to, let's see, let's try another school. Let's uh, actually go to UCSF. And so UCSF sort of once again, gives you sort of a little bit of background information about the school, uh, their deadlines, uh, the supplemental questions, uh, some of their cutoffs, right? You want to ensure that you're meeting the cutoffs of every single section of every single school that you are applying to. Uh, they also give you the stats for the entering class of 2017 here as well. Um, information about letters of reference, uh, their fees, stuff like that. Um, Prerequisite courses. So once again, same deal here. Uh, if you go on to questions, You'll actually notice that, uh, so for NSU, there was no uh, supplemental application on the portal. And so, but if you go for UCSF, you'll see that they do have their secondary application. And you'll know that uh, based on the type of questions and sort of the length of responses they're looking for. And so let's see here. So if, if you've been a reapplicant to this program, and so here they are going to ask you a whole bunch of uh, supplemental application questions that you're going to have to answer if you're applying to this program. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, once you've filled everything out, you can actually go on this uh, download tab. Once your application is sort of complete uh, in all the sections, uh, you'll be able to go to the check status and it says download application. You can download the application for any one of these programs. And so when you do that, you're actually going to be able to see uh, if anything's been verified. You're going to be able to see your GPA calculations right here. As in the beginning, you will not be able to see them until your transcript gets verified. And so you'll download it here and it'll sort of have a printout of all the different GPAs. There's probably, a, I think, probably like 40 different GPAs that they calculate uh, with plus minus, without plus minus, behavioral sciences, just science, uh, BCP, overall, etc. And so that's that. So this is the presentation on navigating the ad SAS portal. Uh, thank you very much for being with me here. Have a good one.